just for like many other people, Dying Light is one of those games that has a special place in my heart. Whenever I feel sad about my massive cock syndrome, I just launch Dying Light and shoot kids with a double barreled shotgun. And suddenly, I feel great. But what if I told you that you can turn this beautiful life into a nightmare? You see, Soy Boys played the game on easy mode. Ugh, weak. Top G's want to try out hard mode, but uh 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 uh. They are locked up in Romania. None of these people can ever come close to the people above everyone. Us. The certified yogurt males. We are the ones who play on the hardest difficulty. The nightmare difficulty. We just love to suffer, make everything stronger and harder to kill. <laughs> the nightmare difficulty. No instant healing, no infinite stamina, no child protection. No weak enemies. No. I guess that's it. Oh, shari shari. It is not just that. I'm just gonna skip the introduction here because nothing interesting happens, you know. We land in Haran as an undercover GRE agent. And the guy gets eaten alive. Then we get introduced to the tower by the president of the comedy himself. Where am I? In paradise, can't you see? <laughs> Get it? He said paradise, but it's actually the most depressing chair I've seen in my entire f***ing life. After this very funny gamer moment, we get introduced to Rahim. He's pretty cool if you ask me. Hopefully nothing bad happens to him. Rahim sends us to the 13th floor to help some dude who got stuck there. It's gonna be some dirty work. Now many people don't know this about me, but I'm a professional when it comes to helping people. So I kill his brother. That was my brother. After saving Mark, we go to the gym, where we have our first seizure. Seriously? No, this is not good. Talk to me. So we go and see someone who can help us. Dr. Zeray. No. Zeray. Zebra. 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 He's pretty cool if you ask me. Hopefully nothing bad happens with him, right? <laughs> the duck gives us the antizin and then we go out to unlock our first safe zone and fix some lights. Let's go! Right before we go to sleep after our exhausting whoa, 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 whoa. day, we see a creature that reminds me of the homeless person who tried to steal my bicycle. The next day, I wanted to show that I was very serious about this undercover agent stuff. So I changed into something that was not suspicious at all. But even this special outfit won't save us from what's about to come. You see, after the tutorial segment, the game finally shows its true colors. Long story short, the zombies turn into moving statues made out of reinforced concrete. And speaking from experience, it is very hard to break reinforced concrete with a strangely long crack pipe. And to make it even worse, the zombies are not even our biggest problem. But more about that later. Back to our 2013 average American action movie storyline, we finally meet the leader of the tower, Bracken. He is a British dude who loves beating stuff. Ironically, he got beaten up while trying to recover an airdrop. And since he can go out to recover the next airdrop, someone else needs to volunteer. I'll go. I'll do it. Oh, come on! Now this is a big moment in our journey of becoming mentally unstable. This is the point where we meet the most dangerous creature of dying light. This guy. Before we left the tower, the medic Lena told us that we need medicine for Brecken. And the only person who has the stuff we need is Gazi, a mentally disabled person who lives with his mother. <laughs> Relatable. So we go to his house and ask him for the medicine. In return, he asks for some chocolate and a movie that is about him. What do you think? What's the movie's name if it is about Gazi? Charlie. I run to the nearest store to pick up the chocolate and then to another one to get the movie. Gotcha. Back at Gazi's place I finally meet his mother and take the medicine. 
With the medicine now in good hands, I can finally focus on getting the airdrops, which first seemed like an easy task to do, but boy I was wrong. Spotting the first airdrop wasn't hard, however we got there too late and sadly, truly a disappointment. What's that? Hey! 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 Two more airdrops. Nice. The first one is already in Bandit's hands, which is not nice. Bruh. Now checking out the third airdrop would be extremely dangerous, since the sun is going down and if you stay out during the night. And so we march into the night. <laughs> I mean, nobody's trying to warn us about anything. Chris, it's too close to sunset. You need to turn back now. Shut the fuck up. After spending 10 minutes clearing out just three zombies around the drop, I opened the crate. <sighs> what would you do with this? Exactly. Burn it. But why did I burn the antis in? You see, I've been hiding a secret from you. This whole time I've been contacting the GRE with updates about my undercover mission. After I reported the airdrop, they ordered me to burn it all. So this way we can force interaction with Rise. The man we are after. The man who has the documents we are here for, remember? No uh, this couldn't get any worse. Ah! No, 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 no. Ah! What the fuck? <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? You would think that running away from these monsters is hard, and you would be absolutely right. But me, I've run away from the IRS just enough times to handle situations like these calmly. I can hear their naked feet. <laughs> now that the tower doesn't have enough antis in, I am forced to get some from our biggest enemy, Rise, who is totally not gay, by the way. <gasps> That's gay! Rise is gay! Honestly, he seems like a good, trustable man. What the fuck? In order to receive antizin from Mr. Totally Not Gay Handchopper 3000, I gotta do some work. You're going to be climbing antenna towers and switching on shortwave radio modulators. As I approach the first tower, the game introduces a new enemy. Your mom. This is peak climbing experience. What the fuck are you? Bye bye. Someone already scavenged this thing for parts. There's nothing up here to switch on. Ah. After turning on the second antenna, I head back to Rise and claim my crate of antizin. But I must do one more thing before that happens. I need to collect some money. Fuck off! I'll tell you what. How about I break both your legs and drag you through the streets back to Rise's place? There is a good reason why I accepted the job. <laughs> Rise offered me not one, but two crates of antizin. Which is amazing! Two crates will be enough for all the suffering survivors in the zone. <laughs> what the fuck? Tower. And he wouldn't lie to me, right? Man, what is this? <laughs> My man, I went through all of this just to get this? Bruh. I fixed the radio. And when I was collecting your money, a random zombie almost blew me up. Wow. Virus didn't let me rah! Virus didn't let me breathe for one second. And the virus. Rah! What is this? And now you want to pop my eyes out with this? At least give me a kiss, bro. But believe it or not, there is a good side to this story. No, 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 no! When I was peacefully walking back to Ryze's place, I had to make a detour to a gas station, where I had to fight some bandits. And boy, oh boy, what did I get? No, not Ebola, why would you say that now? Why would you say that? this? A gun. This little bad boy must have been sent by the CIA, because they just love to give guns to mentally challenged people nowadays. As a result of the small amount of antizin that wouldn't even be enough to overdose on, the tower lost an entire floor to people who turned into zombies. This is so sad. 
broke the TV. After I paid my respects to the dead ones by taking their money for some crap I sold them, I talked to Rahim about some zombiness that he wants to blow up. I don't want to die here, Crane. <laughs> I'm not sure about that buddy, but we will talk about that later. Following my conversation with Rahim, Jade asks me to help her at the local school where I stores many of his important items. Possibly some antizin too that we really need. Don't you find it a bit strange that as soon as I get a gun, the game sends me to a school? Like, come on Techland. I arrive at the school excited about what's about to come. Probably me. But that's not important right now. Remember when I told you about how the zombies turn into reinforced concrete on this difficulty and that there is something even worse than them? Yes, it's the humans. They are really hard to kill. Especially with this terrible combat system, what the fu- But Shari, why don't you just use a gun? Because I'm out of ammo and I don't know why. <laughs> Oh. I gather all my strength and fight my way through every sort of shaft. I gather all my strength and fight my way through every single room ah. using every single item I have in my pocket oh. to find nothing but weird crates over and over again. After failing many times <laughs> and breaking the edge of reality, what the fuck? I find nothing. However, there is still one more place we can search through. The basement. Which is a very cursed place. What? As I meet up with Jade, we open the crate and find... Holy shit. No, I think they are bombs. <laughs> Since I opened up the crate with an ungodly amount of force, the sound I made compromised us. And of course, I am the one, the hero, ah! who stays and fights the bandits. <laughs> Needless to say that I died so many times that the death scream burned into not only my monitor but my mind too. And I'm pretty sure that I will see the same thing when I die. As I leave the building I catch the homeless man trying to steal my bicycle again. But this time I track him down and ask him politely to please stop trying to steal my bicycle. I burn his skin with UV light and cut a big chunk out of his body. Anything for science? While I was out tracking down my nemesis, Rahim snuck out of the tower to destroy the zombie nest that we talked about earlier. Remember? Promise me you won't let Rahim near that high. What? <laughs> he got in trouble, so now I'm on my way to help him. I find him in the train yard with a cut on his leg, which is definitely just a cut and nothing else. Then he gives me the bombs that will explode in 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Now you would think that I went inside, planted the bombs and escaped safely back to Rahim. No. I stood outside and told the building one sentence that made it collapse under itself. Okay, um... Dying like two has no guns. <laughs> Rahim is fucking dead, man. Bruh. It was a bite wound, not a cut. Ugh. After I get back to the tower, I tell the bad news to Brecken, and of course, he starts wrecking stuff. Or more like, wrecking stuff. <laughs> Sadly, as I'm talking to Brecken, Jade steps in and hears about her brother's death. Just give Great. This couldn't get any worse. Ah! 